Today we're going to teach you how to make a really stunning French dessert, a croque and bouche. This showstopper can look pretty intimidating, but combines some simple baking techniques with ingredients most people already have in their pantry. So let's give it a whirl. A croque and bouche is a tower of cream puffs topped with caramel. So let's break it down a bit. There are three main steps. We need to make a custard, a pat of choux, and a caramel. The first step is making the custard since that takes a while to chill. So first, add the milk and vanilla bean to a pot over medium high heat and bring that to a boil. We use two vanilla beans with the seed scrape to really infuse the milk. You can use vanilla extract, but real vanilla beans offer a much more intense flavor that's absolutely worth splurging for. Once the milk comes to a boil, take the pot off the heat and let it infuse for 15 minutes without touching it. In the meantime, you're gonna beat the egg yolks and sugar together at medium speed until they're fully incorporated. This may take a while, so be patient. And if you don't have a hand mixer, you can do this by hand, but get ready for a workout. The batter should look pale yellow and fluffy, like this. Next, you're gonna add the cornstarch and mix until that's fully incorporated. At this point, the milk should be ready to go. Take out the vanilla beans, then mix a half cup of the milk into the batter. Then you can add the rest of the milk and keep mixing until the batter is smooth. Now we're gonna go back on the heat. Full disclosure, this is gonna take a little bit of time and patience. You're gonna keep whisking this over medium heat, stirring constantly for about seven to 10 minutes until the custard begins to thicken. For the first few minutes, it'll feel like nothing is happening, but once it gets going, it thickens up really quickly. You'll start to feel some resistance as you're whisking, and then it should only take one to two more minutes. The important thing is to just keep whisking this entire time. If you don't, you'll end up with some clumpy custard. No one wants that. It's gross. Once your custard has thickened, you're gonna add some butter. This is optional, but the butter will make it creamier. And let's be honest, we're already indulging a bit with this recipe, to say the least. Once the butter's melted and mixed in, we're gonna strain the custard into a bowl. Again, this is optional. It's just a way to get really smooth, silky custard. And here's the last step for custard. You wanna cover this with plastic wrap and press it down to the surface. You really wanna be thorough with this and make sure the surface is completely covered or else a film can form at the top. You wanna to refrigerate the custard for at least two hours. You can also make it a day ahead. While that's chilling, let's move on to our pate choux. This is a common pastry dough used in a ton of recipes. You can use it for eclairs, you can use it for churros, and of course, you can use it for cream puffs, like we are in this recipe. So first, you're gonna add butter, water, sugar, and salt to a pot. Let the butter melt down and bring it to a boil over medium-high heat. Make sure you have everything ready to go before starting the step because it moves pretty quickly from here. Once it begins to boil, immediately turn off the heat and add the flour. Use a wooden spoon to quickly incorporate it until all the liquid's absorbed and the dough begins to form a ball. At this point, you can transfer this to a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, which honestly will make your life a lot easier. But if you don't have one, you can also do this by hand. You're gonna start adding your eggs one at a time, making sure they're fully incorporated before adding the next one. Okay, real talk, be forewarned if you're doing this by hand, it's a workout. Pro tip, grab a friend and tag team this part if you can. The dough will become thicker as you add more eggs. When it's done, it should look thick and glossy and the dough will start to pull away from the edges of the pan like this. Once the dough is ready, it's time to fill up your piping bag. Make sure you're using a medium-sized standard round tip. If you don't have one, you can always fill a Ziploc bag and cut off the tip. When preparing your piping bag, make sure you press the dough all the way down to get rid of any air bubbles. You also wanna twist the top pretty tightly and fold any excess over the edge. Squeeze gently from the top and use your other hand as a guide as you pipe these into a circular motion onto a parchment paper lined baking sheet. You wanna start out by piping a one inch circle, then coming up and in towards the center as you circle around. When you get to the center, stop adding pressure and pull up. This recipe will make about 150 cream puffs, so you're in for the long haul but you'll get a ton of practice. To really get that perfect cream puff shape, dip your fingertip into water and gently press down the tips to flatten them. Then brush it with egg wash to get that glossy sheen. The crucial thing here is to never open the oven door as they start to bake. If you do, your cream puffs might not puff. Once these have finished baking and have cooled, you can start to fill them with custard. Take a wooden skewer and gently poke the bottom of the cream puff to make a small hole. Then you're gonna use a piping bag to gently fill these with custard. Don't go too crazy or your cream puff could explode. Once the cream puff starts to fill up and feel firm, you're good to go. The last step before we assemble the croque and bouche is making a caramel. So you're gonna bring sugar, corn syrup, and water to a boil over medium high heat. Once it begins to boil, put the lid on for five minutes. Once that's done, you can take off the lid and put in a candy thermometer. Whenever you're making caramel or candy, a thermometer is really gonna help you out. You want to heat the caramel until it develops a deep amber color and reaches 300 degrees. At this point, turn off the heat and add the heavy cream and whisk. 
the caramel will immediately start to bubble up, so you want to be really careful at this point so you don't get burned. The caramel will lighten up in color and become smooth and glossy. Now that our caramel is ready, we can start to assemble our croque bouche. You're going to have to work pretty quickly at this point. Dip the tops of the filled cream puffs into the caramel and arrange them into a large circle, filling in the center as you go to keep the top layers more stable. With each layer, you're going to come in a little bit and do the same thing, making smaller and smaller circles until you've created a beautiful tower. Once your tower is complete, dip a fork into the caramel and use that to drizzle caramel threads around the tower. This will create a caramel cage, which you see in a lot of classic croque bouche recipes. This step is really easy to do and will make your croque bouche look so amazing! It's absolutely worth doing. Voila! You've made a croque bouche. This can be pretty time consuming and look a little intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple when you break it down. Plus, now you know how to make a custard, a pat of choux, and a caramel. You know three elements that you can use across a bunch of different desserts. Best of all, now you know how to make this show-stopping dessert. I feel like if you bring a croque bouche to a party, like... You fancy. You fancy. Yeah, if someone showed up with a croque bouche to a party, I'd be like... You'd be like, can I be your friend? You. Oh, really? You're I'd be like... Very different. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, I want to be the person that brings a croque bouche to a party. Can I be your friend?